Hello and welcome to Keys TV News. I'm Tiffany Sweeney. Two men have been shot as they sat in the beer garden of a pub. The men were drinking at the railway pub in Clayton last night when the attacker opened fire. They remain in a serious but stable condition. 12,000 delegates are expected to descend on Manchester City Centre this weekend for the Conservative Party conference. A security operation is underway with parts of the centre being cordoned off. It's expected the conference will bring in more than £24 million to the local economy. Protests are expected to take place during the event and you can catch all the latest online at keysnews.net. With the government and energy companies looking for new ways of supplying our energy needs, hydraulic fracturing, or fracking as it's more commonly known, has recently become a controversial issue. Lucinda Parker investigates. This area of land known locally as Barton Moss is at risk from energy company iGas, who are expected to start exploratory drilling in the coming weeks before their licence runs out on October the 17th. Their plan is to find shale gas deep underground and extract it in a process called fracking. This involves drilling into the ground and pumping water, sand and chemicals into the shale rock at high pressure. The gases within the rock can then be extracted and used to generate electricity, but campaigner Bob Dennett disagrees with what the companies are saying and is wary of the side effects that are involved, having experienced an earth tremor caused by another Lancashire site. There are immense dangers associated with it. Uh, pollution of the land is a given. That is going to happen. There is the potential for water pollution, there is potential for more earthquakes. In fact, there was an earthquake in Blackpool last night. I was woken up at 2.32 a.m. on the 1st of April 2011 by my house being severely shaken. Um, Quadrilla, the operator, the, the drilling company, uh, frequently described this as, uh, it was a 2.3 magnitude. Uh, a 2.3 magnitude is like a bus driving past your house. Well, I can assure you it's not. It was like a 48 ton truck driving through my house. Um, I've got to say at first it scared me. But then when I looked up and saw the light swinging, and I thought, well, that's another earthquake. Last night, a group of about 50 locals of all ages and backgrounds attended a meeting in Eccles to express their views and concerns about the project. This included representatives from Manchester Against Climate Change, Salford Docklands Heritage and Nature Group, and Friends of the Earth. Their conclusion was to stop the fracking project from going any further by each contributing bits of research to build up their case. For now though, all they can do is spread the word about the dangers of fracking in order to get more locals fighting for the cause. New traffic cameras capable of catching up to 50 times more drivers are being placed in Manchester city centre. The 15 cameras target motorists who illegally use bus lanes and can be found in various locations such as Cheatham Hill Road, Ashton Old Road and Victoria Station Approach. The cameras cost £17,000 each and can help catch drivers on a greater range of offences. Almost half of five-year-olds in Oldham and Salford now have decayed, missing or filled teeth. According to NHS data, children in parts of Greater Manchester have among the highest rates of tooth decay in England. children look after their teeth. We recently filmed a, a health programme with a doctor in Spain and we met loads of different kids and he kept telling them to brush their teeth and I thought, that's obvious, that's like saying put one foot in front of the other when you walk. But it's ingrained in you when you were a child, so if I went to bed now without brushing my teeth I'd feel dirty. Yeah. Mm. That's the worst feeling, that's the worst thing about camping is waking up and not being able to brush your teeth. Welcome to Keys Community. This week we're focusing on the firefighter strike. The Fire Brigades Union called for a strike last Wednesday with around 32,000 firefighters up and down the country picketing against the proposed cuts to their pensions. Higher Broughton Community Fire Station was one of many Greater Manchester stations involved in the strike. Around 30 firefighters including Brian's chairman David Campbell were stood at the roadside in the protest to keep their pension age at 55 instead of 60. Were you affected by the strikes? Do you support or oppose them? Send in your tweets with the hashtag Keys Community. Join us in the studio is Fire Union um, rep and activist Simon Hickman. Thanks for coming in, Simon. My pleasure. I, thought, I suppose the main question is, why were the firefighters on strike? 
Well, it's obviously it's about our, uh, trying to protect our pensions. You know, we've been in negotiations uh, with the government for over two years, and at the moment they're just not for moving. So, do you believe that strikes like this are effective? Do you think the government will listen? This is it's our last resort. I mean, it certainly goes against the grain for firefighters to strike, but uh, when they won't listen to reasoned argument, we've really got no other route to take. What was the reaction from the general public to the strikes? It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, we had lots of other trade unions come down to the picket lines, and you know the, the feedback from the general public who were passing uh, was really good. It was encouraging for the firefighters because it's it is certainly nerve-wracking walking out them doors. So, how are strikers um, going to? Um actually work this out, is, are there going to be more strikes or is there going to be more talks? As, as yet we don't know, uh, the, really the, the four hour strike was to uh, keep our ballot live uh, so that we can uh, continue uh, and take more industrial action if needed but the hope is that the uh, government will come back to the negotiating table but we're still waiting for that to happen. Well the key word buzzing around Twitter was solidarity, mm -hmm. were all the firefighters in union? Yeah, it was it, it was absolutely absolutely fantastic. I mean, uh, across Greater Manchester, uh, it was 100% solid. Uh, and looking across the UK, you know, it was yeah, it was really really strong. Uh, and, and the picket lines were strong as well, which I think will, hopefully will send a clear message uh, to the government. Well, we've also had um, some activity on social media. It was a hive of activity during the strike, with many Twitter users showing support for the firefighters and some criticising them. Simon Pickett thanked the Eccles community for supporting them during their fight against a ridiculous pension reform. Diane also tweeted, just being past Eccles Fire Station. Good to see so many firefighters on strike today. All the best with the picket. So how much did the public support help those who were picketing at striking? It, it's, it's fantastic to know that you've got the public support. I mean, we, we know that it's, uh, it's not just firefighters that are under attack. So. We, we thought that we would get that sort of support, and we, we have done traditionally. But it, it certainly it's, it makes it a lot easier uh, to take that action when you know you're getting the support from uh, the people that you serve. Obviously, we're referring to this map as well. This was um, the Salford area mm -hmm. during the strike. We've had someone saying supporting Salford firefighters at noon today. There was also opposition from um, this gentleman here. I helped Fireman Sam and his cronies get the comeuppance. Did you see any other opposition during the strikes? No. But personally, I didn't. I haven't heard any any reported, uh, you know, throughout Greater Manchester. Uh, obviously, some people, you know, w will object. Uh, they see that because they don't have it, uh, why should we? But you know, for for a, a as a union member, it's not a race to the bottom. We think everyone should be entitled to uh, a reasonable pension, a reasonable standard of living. Excellent. And also, we had fellow firefighter Claire Hodgson tweeting, "I don't want to strike." I also don't want to be sighted at 59 without a pension because I'm not as fit and strong as a 20-year-old firefighter. And finally, Andrew Foy tweeted, Imagine taking out a 25-year-old mortgage after paying 15 years and get told you have to pay a further 33 years for the same value. Any takers? So back to you, Tiffany. Thank you. Now to entertainment news and Salford Music Festival showcases a range of musical talent from up and coming artists. The festival continues this weekend. Our entertainment reporter Kate Emery has more. From now until Sunday, up and coming artists will be performing all over Salford in honour of its annual festival. Salford Music Festival is in its fourth year of running and it's now bigger than ever. With hundreds of acts coming together all over Salford, it makes the perfect event for any music lover to attend. Manchester has always been on the map for its musical talent, but now with the help of Ed Blaney, Salford is soon catching up. Uh, basically, Salford's uh, a great place uh, full of musical history. Uh, the, some of the pubs, it's all about um, promoting the pubs as well as live venues and um, the heart of Salford. It's a beautiful city. I'm a proud Salfordian. Manchester always tries to nick our legacies. Uh, New Order, Joy Division, Happy Mondays, The Fall, they're all Salford groups. And hoping to follow in the footsteps of Salford's greats, Gareth Ike and his band are taking part in the event. 
is, yeah. For someone like me, you know, like I say, I'm not from, I'm not from round here. I live in Derby, 200 miles or 70 odd miles away, sorry. And so, I would never really get an opportunity to play to a big audience here in Manchester because no one knows who the hell I am. So, they've given me an opportunity to do that, which is really kind of them. Artists are spread out into 25 different venues around Salford, one of which being the Black Lion, who are thrilled to be involved. Yeah, um, yeah, I love Salford Music Festival. I think that um, there's a lot of people that want to get into um, kind of local sofa bands, but it it makes it into kind of a big event. It makes it something that's really accessible. Um, like we have amazing bands on here all the time, but we know that Salford Music Festival is going to be a massive event, and it's going to kind of bring a lot of new bands in and a lot of new people listening to them. So. So for anyone interested in discovering a new band or watching live music, it seems that Salford is the place to be. To see the full lineup for the event and to find your nearest venue, visit www.salfordmusicfestival.co.uk. Warrington Wolves have made it to the Super League's Grand Final for the second consecutive season. They beat Huddersfield 30-22 last night. The final will take place at Old Trafford on October the 5th. In British cycling, championships also return this week. Helen Rowe Wilcox has more. In preparation for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, cyclists from around Britain are training at the National Cycling Centre. At the Manchester Velodrome this week are the British National Track Championships running until Saturday the 29th of September. Today we're going to watch the 3000 metre women's pursuit where last year's runner-up Charlene Joyner is against the double Olympic British champion Laura Trott. The championships have 56 races testing all ages and abilities such as the 4000 metre pursuit, paracycling and sprints. Previous winners of the championships have included Olympian Sir Chris Hoy, Rebecca Romero and Sarah Storey. After winning two gold medals at the London Olympics alongside teammate Danny King, the two are now competing in the 3000 metre pursuit final. We ask her how she's feeling after the race. It was quite hot to be honest, I thought I might have gone a bit quicker, but the conditions in here feel a bit sticky, like it doesn't seem to be as running as smoothly as it was yesterday or even the day before in training. But no, it was good, it's going to be a good final. You'll be seeing me at the Commonwealth Games, um, I'll be doing individual pursuit points and scratch and maybe even the road race, but um, yeah, it'll be nice. It's good preparation for me in the Omnium as well. The championships will finish on Saturday, with many athletes using these events as training for the up-and-coming Commonwealth Games next summer. This is Helen Rowe Wilcox reporting for Keys TV News. Manchester City fans have been bragging after their side beat their neighbours comfortably in last week's derby. During the week, City beat Wigan 5-0 and United knocked Liverpool out of the Capital One Cup. This morning, United goalkeeping legend Peter Schmeichel says he isn't confident over his old club's title chances. He believes that it'll take lots of time for David Moyes to settle into the club. Tomorrow, the Reds host West Brom while City travel to Villa as they both continue their fight for the Premiership. That's all for the sport. Before we go, a mural created by school children has been shortlisted for a national prize. Pupils at St Patrick's High School in Winton designed and created the art for the Patrickoff Station. The mural, entitled Pioneers of the Industrial Revolution, highlights the rich industrial past of the area. The result will be announced at an award ceremony taking place in Clandidno at the end of the month. That's all from us here. If you want to find out more about Keys TV News, please visit our website, Keys TV News. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Keys News. Goodbye.